first of all thank Akshara Foundation for giving me this great privilege of being with them in their celebrations of a 10-year journey. And I know how important each day is in a 10-year journey, especially for those who are working with children and working on education for their children. Really, I must congratulate Rohini Nilakani and her team, each one of them, for what they have shown us as what they have done for each and every child. And I know that when you're doing this kind of a profound work with young children, it is actually planning for every child. And they have made 700,000 plans. And I must thank you. And really, I'm so proud that I'm part of this movement today that we're celebrating something so important. What I thought was also very important was a partnership between the corporates, the civil society, and the government. It's not usual that this partnership goes on for a decade. Usually, these are strange honeymoons. They occur for a year, and then they lapse. Uh, what is so important that it has sustained itself, and it's went on and on through different officers, through transferred officers, through, you know, how difficult it is to work with the government and its system. It's never the same. And that they have institutionalized this partnership so well. And I must say that it, it must be the strong idea. Uh, I know ideologies are very important. And it's a strong ideology behind it that children have rights. Children, young children have more rights than you and me have. And that they need to be protected. That spurred the action and that must have been so infectious that all partners are together so strong and they've expanded the partnership to as you've just mentioned i was quite moved that there are people coming to you saying what about sportswear what about hostels for girls i think this is so good uh, let me tell you this is a movement a movement is when people start saying what can i do for you and if they're still doing it in the name of Akshara Foundation and you don't even know, that is a bigger movement. That you must not know what people are doing in your name and it's going on. That you have given strength to so many people to take up the cause. Again, congratulations for all of this. And uh, I, I, I must say that the Right to Education Act has given us a lot more strength to carry on what we are doing. We know what the provisions of the Right to Education Act are. I mean, each one of us who is sitting here is an educationist. But it is important to uh, see that it is a result of endless battles of many, many civil society organizations on the ground. And many of their ideas have been incorporated. We are, of course, disappointed that children below six years have not been included in the Right to Education Act. We are disappointed that older children, 14 to 18 years, have not had their rights in the act. But still, let me tell you, it is still a very, very historic and significant act. And uh, even if below six are not included, in, they still have a right. The right is not justiciable. That does not mean they don't have a right. They have uh, been included in the Act on Free and Compulsory Education. Here I wish to say that every stage of education for a child is equally important. It is difficult to say whether we should focus on early child and not on primary or on elementary school and not on secondary. I would say that all stages of education from preschool to university are equally important. And as educationists, we, s we, shall, we must emphasize the importance of education for all stages and a lateral entry for the poorest of the poor to get into university, to get into colleges, to, to get into vocational skills, to get into schools at a secondary level, elementary level, primary school, early school. If it is weak at the university, it is bound to be weak at preschool. If it is weak at preschool, it is bound to be, be weak at secondary school. Here we are for all stages of education. And when we talk about all stages of education, it should be free it should be free and there should be affirmative action for all the poor to enter into the education stream at whatever level. The lateral entry is very, very important. We cannot give up on a child who's made well at 10th grade because she cannot afford university education. 
all levels and stages and streams of education are equally important having said this i thought i will just talk to you a little about my personal views not necessarily of the commission uh, 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 on how i look at quality of education and how i feel that it is incorrect to dichotomize access and retention it is in uh, is incorrect to dichotomize access of school with uh, quality of education now I, it seems that in many places there is this discussion that we have attained access 94 percent of children are already in schools the problem now is of learning outcome the problem now is of quality of education i do not agree with this formulation since your education is i thought that i may as well talk to you about my views on the again the interdependence between universal access in its real sense not in the sense of it being as numbers in an attendance register or names in an attendance register but as children actually being there in school and its relation to access of education and that is what i will talk to you now we know that there are access in access issues there are several several barriers uh, to education even today rohini did uh, mention uh, this when she talked about the boy in the construction work site and that is what one is talking about uh, as when we talk about access there and when when a parent sends a child to school that parent again is like you and me she thinks that child will complete school at least up to class 10 no parent admits a child to school thinking the child will drop out of school or the child will be irregular that is the hope that is a conviction that is the aspiration with which a child is sent to school by any parent in this world poor or rich what is the capacity of the system to hold this child till the child finishes education without disruption and i am talking about education till a very bare minimum 10th grade in fact i would like it up to 12th grade but okay some concession to the government up to 10th grade what is its capacity to hold this child it almost seems like it's a lottery ticket we do not know which child will continue up to class 10 and which child will not be able to continue up to class 10 it is no nobody can predict it only 22% of our country's children make up to class 10 which means only those have won the lottery ticket the rest have not it is a matter of accident that the child continues in school it's not by design why do i say this there are as you know structural deficiencies there are just not enough upper primary schools there are just not enough elementary schools there are just not enough secondary schools and if you look at the data of dropouts say 55% of children drop out in class 8 that is because there are schools only for 45% of children if there were if the system anticipated all children up to class 8 will be in school then there should have been schools for all children up to class 8 i was in alwar it is about three hours from uh, Delhi two months ago. It was a belt of Mewat Muslims and especially there was a myth that Muslim girls will not go to school. We had a hearing. The hall was full of Malvis and parents, all of the men. There's, they said very clearly, we want to send our daughters to school. 12, 13, 14 year old girls to school. They didn't say they wanted a par uh, that they wanted to be allowed to wear a burqa. Nothing. They said we want schools, and there were no schools after class five in that area, and the distance was at least eight to ten kilometers. So how on earth are these girls uh, going to continue? They have sixteen residential schools constructed with about four crore rupees, beautiful buildings, for the last four years. Nothing has begun. It seems the buildings were constructed for the contractors and not for children. There were no teachers. There were no students. There were only buildings. So somewhere, they, when we asked, they said Muslim girls don't come. So they didn't find the need to have teachers, to have 
anything but they felt that the buildings were enough but you need more than buildings for a school to happen so what i'm trying to say is that there is never an anticipation that the poor will send their children to school and therefore not enough is provided that i think is a very very important barrier and i hope this will be overcome by right to education the other issue that strikes the commission uh, when it has, is going through the work is the issue of corporal punishment i think it's it's tremendous that the almost every school we find has not done away with insulting children even rich schools elite schools government schools everywhere this is practiced as if it was a best pedagogic tool to make a child learn no teachers training program ever said children will have to be beaten up to be disciplined or to be learning but it happens as a parampara and somewhere this has to be gone and this also i think is a very very important barrier then there is an indirect message that poor children are non performers and i'm sure akshara foundation has shown such bright children in the just small pictures that we've shown look at the eyes of sneha i mean such bright girls but it seems that the beauty of such children are seldom recognized in a in a routinized fashion unless we made it as something with uh, so special look look at sneha she too can read why must we make a statement such as this it should be seen as if that any child can read and we are still in a uh, way we think that poor cannot attain it's not you what we are doing in this hall but on the whole there is still a kind of a discrimination and there is still a kind of a mood that perhaps for the poor this is enough they don't need more than this they you know that attitude also should go so to me combating these barriers of structural deficiencies of corporal punishment of respecting the first generation learner of doing away with transfer certificates doing away with birth certificates doing away with uh, and having age appropriate learning all of which which is now guaranteed in the constitution is as important and indispensable for pedagogy as improving quality of education they are also pedagogy along with teacher what happens in a classroom between teacher and child these aspects are also important aspects of pedagogy therefore a non achievement of a child in a school must be seen in the context in which a school is located and not as a failure of the child if all these aspects are dealt with then the child will succeed even if there's no teacher i think sometimes again going back to alwar there were students who said we don't have urdu textbooks the government said you don't have urdu textbooks because you don't have urdu teachers who is going to tell you then the student said we will learn it ourselves but at least give us a textbook don't link the aspect of a teacher being present for a textbook even if there's no teacher give us books we will read it so we have to order because there's a government order that says you need uh, teachers to have your textbooks we said then give them xerox textbooks don't print them but let them have textbooks they want to make their own, own arrangements what i'm trying to tell you is that those children would have failed not because they didn't have a teacher but because they didn't have a textbook to teach them i'm not saying then don't give teachers but what i'm saying is there are many many systemic issues that make a child fail so combating access actually introduces the process of democratizing of schools it creates a demand for education there is already again as rohini said an explosive demand for education we have seen how poor parents are sacrificing for education for getting their children into schools and by combating all these deficiencies even before we get into improvement of quality of education it actually responds to the demands for school the at the moment i find that the education system is challenged 